My name is Mark Bowen. I'm an orthopedic surgeon specializing in orthopedic sports medicine. Today we're going to be demonstrating the preparation of a single quadrupled semitendinosus tendon using two ultra buttons. The indications for our quadrupled single tendon technique include any acute or chronic ACL tear is preferred for patients with patellofemoral degeneration or a history of patellofemoral tracking issues or pain, when a patient prefers to minimize anterior knee pain or difficulty kneeling, and in revision of bone tendon bone reconstructive techniques. Once harvested, the semitendinosus tendon graft is prepared using the Smith & Nephew X-Wing graft preparation station. Two ultra buttons are utilized and loaded onto the station. To load, the clamps are opened and then closed around each button. The posts are normally set between 240 and 260 millimeters depending on graft length. Most of the time the entire tendon is utilized and is typically proportional to height. Our goal is to have a continuous loop of tendon four strands that overlaps at its beginning and end by about 12 to 15 millimeters. Typically, the graft length for someone five feet tall would be in the 56 millimeter range and someone six foot two, 70 millimeters. The tendon is secured to itself with multiple 2-0 braided non-absorbable sutures. The goal is to keep the tendon from slipping on itself. The needle is passed through all six strands of tendon. I like to cross in the tendon and then tie one knot and wrap around the tendon in order to package it for implantation. This is typically repeated two or three more times. This section of the graft will be the portion that will be buried inside the tibia. It is important not to penetrate the ultra button cradle or the ultra button will not tension properly during implantation. A similar single suture is used on the closed end of the graft both to package the graft and to mark 10 to 15 millimeters that will go up into the femur. Tension is then added to the graft up to 300 newtons for one minute to remove laxity of the interfaces that can occur with tension later on. The graft is then measured. This graft is 60 millimeters with approximately 12 millimeters for either end. Finally, the diameters of the two ends of the graft are measured, snug but freely passing. Postoperative rehabilitation includes immediate weight bearing as tolerated. Physical therapy is initiated early without range of motion restrictions, and a locked brace is typical until quadriceps control is restored.